Yo, what up? What's going on? Welcome back to the KevCast. My name is Kevin. You have reached part three of the Suzuka 7 series, baby. We're at Mie Prefecture. Today is Shaka Gadake, um, a rocky one, but another good one. So uh, stay tuned again till the very end so you can catch all the details on how to do it, as well as my all trails map so you can figure out the route and not make the mistakes that I did. So if that's something that you're interested in, might be beneficial to you, please subscribe, please like, please share with a friend, all that good stuff. Enjoy.
Hey, all right, welcome to the second part of the episode. I hope you enjoyed some of the shots uh, on the drone. I had some SD card issues, so a lot of the shots that I took on uh, the Canon actually were corrupted. I can't use them, but you know, it is what it is, so we'll just work with what we got and I uh, hope that you enjoyed uh, the shots that survived. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how I did the hike, the route that I took, some of the gear that I used, as well as some helpful tips for you so that you're able to not make a few of the mistakes that I did and find yourself in a bit of a bit of a pickle as I did a few times on this on this hike. So, yeah, this is the all trails. This is exact exactly what I did. Um, as you can see, right, we're in the same area of Japan right in the middle region nagoya is where i live and just off to the side here on the left is um Mie prefecture and the suzuka mountain range i drove a car this this route along kind of the water there took me about an hour hour 30 minutes or so uh, here are some of the other hikes of the suzuka 7 that you can see Dake and fujiwaragadake But here's the route. It's a little bit longer than I had planned because I did make a few uh, mistakes along the way. Um, the first mistake was right here. I went up this trail and should have not done it. And so I had to trek back and get to the main part. This little squiggly up here is where I caught myself on a rock face. It was pretty dangerous. I didn't expect to do any rock climbing, but that's what ended up happening. And yeah, please be sure to stay on the trail because that was a bad position to be in. But up along the top left ridge line was just awesome. And it didn't change much in elevation up along here. And all of the views were incredible. I was there around 4.30, so sunset was coming in and it was excellent do that at that time the problem is that when you come back you return around this route this long looping route it's dark and because the markers along the trail are not very good sometimes it's hard to find your way clearly but if you have something like all trails or like a gps downloaded map then you'll be okay to do it we moved outside of Inabe City, and this is in um, Komono City, as we work our way down south through the Suzuka 7. As far as the route goes, I think that's pretty close to what I had planned, minus the few first mistakes, um, and then making that big sweep around the outside rather than cutting it short would have been a better choice. Um, my total time hiking was about 7 hours. Active time was 5 hours and 30 minutes, so... I did spend a lot of time loitering around and getting lost and making mistakes and uh, trying to take footage which got corrupted, aye, aye, aye. but um, that is what happened, seven hours total. So when I arrived at around 11.30, free parking, don't make the mistake and go up the hill, just the entrance to the uh, Shakagadake route or course is right next to the parking lot. There's bathrooms and things like that, vending machines, so you'll be all right. Again, you're driving through uh, Komono City so you can stop at any kind of um, convenience store and pick up whatever you want there chicken or chickity tendies or other kind of stuff like that onigiri whatever what have you and um, that's nice and easy so um, what I brought on the trip again was this bag here this 40 liter bag none of this jazz I'll be taking this one on the Nakasendo with me it's a little bit bigger the Paragon 58 but here I'm just able to, cra to grab the Z40. Again, too much weight, or too much too much space. I didn't need all of this space. I could have done it in like a day packer, you know, like a 20 liter, but um, that's just fine. Yeah, having some extra space is all right. Just in case you were caught on the mountain when the sun goes down, you've got an extra jacket, you've got your headlamp, you've got some things to keep you warm to get you safely off of the mountain. Um, I was just on the edge, I think, of hitting the fall leaves on this trip. They're starting to change as you saw in the video with some of the aerial shots, but they're not quite there yet. So I think by the end of this series, maybe by like uh, the end of the month here, things are going to be looking pretty, pretty awesome. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing that all with you. 
Um, heading up the hill or heading up the mountain, keep in mind there are no bathroom stops. There's no checkpoints, there's no water stations, so you'll need to bring everything with you that you're going to need for the full five and a half, six, seven hours as I did. And uh, just plan accordingly there. I think if you're trying to train yourself to drink less and less water as, or need less and less water as you're moving, um, as well as <clears throat> just be having less food, Maybe it saves on weight, maybe it's building up your stamina, but that's what I'm trying to get after here. And so uh, the last trip at, um, you know, Ryugadake, I brought 2.5 milliliters, 2.5 liters of water. This time I broke it down to two. So next week when I get out to Mount Gozaisho, uh, I'm going to try to shave that down again to 1.5. The thing about Gozaisho is that there are some stations. There's a freaking restaurant on the top of the mountain, so the uh, commodities or whatever they're called uh, amenities are there conveniences are there and you can take advantage of that for this one you don't have it so some tips to be aware of for this one is stay on the course don't get lost because you might find yourself on a rock face like i did don't do that it's dangerous it's bad um go around the long way because coming around that back ridge was just the most beautiful thing i've seen uh, the fall leaves are starting to change color. The sunset was coming down. The lights of the of Komono City were on so that you had the whole trifecta, right, of the city view, the changing leaves, as well as the sunset. It was pretty incredible. Be aware that you're going to be on the mountain if you want to see this after the sun goes down. So make sure to bring some kind of headlamp um, and bring some navigation because it's hard to find your way around the mountain when it's dark at night. Uh, gear wise I think you're fine with just your normal stuff 40 liter bag bring some shoes don't just bring sneakers you're gonna need some kind of like trail running shoes or hiking shoes for this if you're down at night bring a bring a uh, jacket or some kind of outer layer so that you can stay warm I wore shorts and that's fine a no hat it was sunny but it's not hot in, in uh, October here so didn't have to worry too much about keeping my head warm which is a mistake bring a hat because if you're there at night, it gets dark and it's cold. So uh, take care of your head. Um, beyond that, though, you know, it's it's hard to beat some of the views that I saw here. I can't believe that the files got corrupted on the SD card. But, you know, hopefully the drone shots do it some justice. And uh, I'll be more careful in the future with taking it in and out of the in and out of the camera and when it's on and off. And anyways, that's what happened to me. So I hope that this was informative for you. I hope that. It was able to give you an idea of how to plan your trip and make none of the mistakes that I made. Yep, just make sure that you're careful with your equipment so that you can capture all the video that you want and, um, you know, be able to use it to make videos at the end or do whatever you want to do creatively after the hike. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I loved making it. I hope you loved watching it. Thank you so much. And, um... You know, look forward to bringing you the rest of the Suzuka 7. There are four more in this series. Check out Fujiwara Gadake and uh, Ryugadake in the links or some of the, uh, for some of the, the first two hikes on the Suzuka 7 series. Outside of that, thank you very much. Peace.